Good morning, and welcome to our final day of Coverings Connected in this morning's webinar, Application and Specification of Tile for Outdoor Use. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items. This program is AIA accredited for one HSWLU and IDCEC accredited for one CEU. Please check the chat screen for contact information on how to request your CEU. All attendees are in listen-only mode. You can submit text questions to today's presenters by typing your questions into the questions section of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation. We will share with the presenters during the Q&A at the end of the presentation, getting to as many as time allows. If you are having problems connecting or any other issues, often closing the window and starting a new window will fix the problem. If you are having problems with your computer audio, call the number on your invitation to listen via phone. The audio pin for this session is 86 pound or hashtag, depending on your generation. This session will be recorded and made available on the Coverings site after Coverings Connected. Don't miss all the other great Coverings Connected opportunities available through coverings.com today. I would now like to introduce our great presenters. Martin Brooks, founder of Heritage Marble and Tile Incorporated, has been active in the masonry and tile industry since 1978. He, has, he is a recognized industry consultant, National Tile Contractors Association Vice President, sits on the NTCA Technical Standards and Methods Committee and the ANSI A108 Committee. Brooks is also an active member in the Institute of Inspection Certification Restoration. Woody Sanders is the president of D.W. Sanders Tile and Stone Contracting Incorporated based in Atlanta, Georgia. D.W. Sanders Tile and Stone Contracting is an NTCA five-star contracting firm that specializes in large and small bespoke stone and tile projects in both new and remodeling sectors of the residential market. Other areas of service include cut to order stone installations, specialty cladding projects, and pedestal tile stone installation. Woody is a certified tile installer and sits on the NTCA Technical Committee and is regional evaluator for the Ceramic Tile Education Foundation. Take it away, Woody and Martin. Good morning and welcome to the final day of Coverings Connect. And first, let me just Thank everybody for showing up this morning, even though it is virtual. I'm sorry we're missing your smiling faces. That we're all not in New Orleans, but we'll look forward to seeing everybody in Orlando next year. Um, this is, as we said, an AIA certified for CEUs, and we'll jump right in. So here we go with the objectives for today. Uh, to explain exterior pedestal systems, the difference between traditional exterior systems, and the most suitable conditions for their installation, meaning deck slope, height restrictions, wind shear, etc. Demonstrate the difference and rationale for materials that can and cannot be used in a pedestal system. Discuss maintenance and durability differences between traditional and pedestal systems, including substrate, waterproofing, and replacement options. And explore the installation process and life cycle of exterior pedestal systems. So the question becomes, where do we use pedestals? And and of course, for Martin and I, our primary world is in the residential market, although we're not limited to that. But why have one of the reasons pedestals have become so um, popular is obviously outdoor living spaces have become more popular and people are looking to uh, move not just the indoor living, but looking at their outdoors with landscaping and that um, urban density. It's space that uh, as uh, as we go more compact with townhomes today, uh, the roof deck becomes an option for a living space. And these spaces can become green very quickly and green certified. Martin, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean, the other thing, that that's, that's one we did on the top left, and that was a failed uh, uh, stone installation prior to us putting a pedestal system. And some people are just, you know, they're, they're getting frustrated with a, a membrane system failing or the, the the tile failing and they look architects and designers are looking for alternatives that um, you know offer value uh, but don't uh, necessarily have the maintenance or uh, don't um, you know can last a, a longer period of time than a traditional mud set uh, installation um commercial and multifamily we uh, are doing some projects along those lines that, that um Pedestals can interwork with the amenities packages you see in the bottom left with the swimming pool. Um, they also make great meeting space uh, for the future. 
and uh, they allow a lot of energy in uh, urban design and reuse of space. Some of these uh, spaces may have been unusable spaces uh, prior to the pedestal system because of roof slope, et cetera, and, and may have not been usable. Now they become usable um, and the membrane becomes maintainable with a pedestal system. It's a great use of, of space that probably would not be uh, usable prior to a pedestal system. And the, their cost, you know, if you look at their costs as well, it's a fairly inexpensive area to develop. Uh, versus uh, traditional construction. But institutional, government, hotels, we're also seeing pedestals being used there as represented in these pictures. Uh, I love the lightweight assembly uh, that's available with the pedestal. This uh, helps, obviously, there's statistics out there. The more weight we can take out of a construction pro project, the, the better the cost is to the developer or the end user um, or owner. Uh, I love the accessibility. Uh, this gets back into the creative side. Uh, with accessibility, it's easy to adjust lighting for buildings, um, irrigation for plants. In some cases, we've got projects where they're putting uh, mosquito misting systems in there. One thing I want to note, Woody, and I, I saw it on previous, we don't need to go back, but uh, you can see in that bottom left where the standing water is. So the deck that we did on the prior slides had standing water. And this was a concern for the for the homeowner. We were directed to do a perfectly level deck. And I explained about water tension and how water would congregate on these tiles prior. But unfortunately, that message wasn't taken to the homeowner. So we set the expectation we thought, but with the end user, he didn't understand how a perfectly flat deck would hold water. And so with surface tension, we ended up with puddles of water on there, very small, and it would evaporate within a couple of hours when the sun came out. But you may want to consider that and put that question out there if you're doing a pedestal deck and somebody wants it perfectly flat. You're absolutely right, Martin, because I think that's something that uh has to be taken into consideration uh, and sit because just like any tile insulations, expectations become a, a, a big factor. Um, also, pedestal decks, you know, they walk a little softer than a hard bonded deck. And, and if when people don't have an experience with that, it's something that you have to explain in the forefront. And we've talked so, about that, Woody. Uh, prior is it's going to sound different you're going to hear a ding you're going to you're going to feel a little bit of movement it's not a bonded system and so again setting the expectation up front is always a good idea so i know we've talked about this you know what led us into pedestals were something you've already touched on but there there's certainly some inherent problems that we see continuously on exterior applications and and part of those conclude the freeze thaw damage uh, drainage and chemical resistance. I know Martin you've got some others as well. Yeah and one thing that uh, we wanted to stress here we're not we're not taking away a bonded system they still work it's just that sometimes there's inherent problems with these bonded systems and it, the, the area that you're trying to tile might not be the best area for a bonded system we're just giving an alternate here uh, and having the tile contractor be able to give an option for something that they may lose to maybe wood or something else. So this really is an option, a viable option to a bonded system um, installation. You know, uh, um, the other thing is, as we get into all exterior tile work, as we've stated so many times in the past, it needs maintenance. And without that understanding, um, you ultimately end up with problems like spalling or sometimes in particular stones that are used in exterior applications can have lack of chemical resistance around a pool. Saltwater pools are getting more and more popular today. Um, certain stones don't hold up real well against them and pedestals um, give you a fairly maintenance free installation. It's just uh, again it's that low maintenance. It's not uh, zero maintenance but it is low maintenance. Uh, some other problems that include uh, inherent with exterior is drainage and, and trying to get the 
what I call secondary drainage. I, I consider primary drainage water hits tile. We slope to areas and we get it to fall off off the, the installation. But then you, a lot of times these decks aren't built where they can handle secondary drainage. This is a job we looked at on the top right. This how, job was about about 14 months old. Obviously, there's a lot of other issues with this project other than than slope and proper slope and waterproofing, but there's inherently some complexities <clears throat> when we get into bonded tile systems with waterproofing and some designs just don't set up well for them. And there's the problem. The architect draws it, the framer frames it, the waterproof guy waterproofs it, and then we're expected to tile it. And a lot of times the crickets, the falls in the roof, it can't be tiled successfully without problems. It just can't. Uh, but yet we're expected to do that. So again, this system allows to take that away from us and put a tile surface down that takes away the problems of a traditional bonded method. And as we get into the uh, problem with lack of drainage, obviously our old nemesis S fluorescence shows up. And, and uh, Martin, I'm going to let you uh, jump on that top of that right hand slide there with the with your favorite term of we, we looked at that before and it's like i guess that was spot bonded right, <laughs> right. but uh, again it's like that might be a problem underneath that was inherently there that the tile installer was expected to tile but because the crickets and the way that the drainage is might not have been a good idea to have tiled that deck and the pedestal system would have worked a lot better and created less problems than what we see there. I mean, that that that's coming out. That's not a good install. And they may not go back with tile. We want to be able to give them an option where tile is still a consideration. So let's look at like slab on grade applications, F113, uh, thin set direct to concrete or or F101, a, a, a mud, mud bed that contact mud bed. And, and in, the, in both these cases, this is a job we, we actually replaced. Um, this was not just omission of maintenance. There was just no maintenance and inevitably lack of expansion joints, freeze thaw. This was here in Georgia. Uh, we do get a lot of free stall cycles in the year, and 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 you you look at these again. I'm not. We're not. Martin and I are both agreed. That we're not saying tile can't be hard bonded, and 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 we do have good methods in that. But and but there's a lot of detailing when you get into exterior methods, uh, and and a lot of precautions need to be taken. Just not just licking and sticking the tile onto a concrete slab. And we talked about that too, Woody, uh, about the vapor proofing on the slab. We don't know whether the, the concrete guy actually put a, a vapor proof system in there, or if he did, whether he punctured it when he walked on it, pouring the concrete, which will let, allow yeah. vapors back up through the slab and will cause soluble salts and staining on the tile. We don't know. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and the other thing is, is, you know, we get into whether it was air and trained or non air and trained concrete, air and trained is should be what's being used. And d does does the builder or the GC even understand the type of slabs we should have there to begin with? Are they even pitched appropriately? And is the sub drainage even pitched appropriately? And there's a, a lot of things that that while we're we're affected by, but we don't have control over. Basically, we inherit a lot of other people's problems and then we get the blame for the problem and that's and, what we try to eliminate here and, and while we always need that further education and that this is one that you did martin uh, why don't you elaborate on this with the yeah, f103b I did that inspection probably seven eight years ago and uh as you can see uh, awful i mean it the the soluble salts maybe latex leaching came all the way down the patio window stained the glass couldn't get it off the glass so brand new door needed brand new huge patio door uh, had to be replaced, uh, but uh, the slope uh, would not allow for a, a, a bonded tile installation. It just couldn't be done, but the tile installer was pushed into doing it. And then the repercussions of that, he ends up buying the whole uh, repair and redo of something that couldn't, couldn't be done successfully. And uh, this is why it's really important to have this knowledge that we're, we're using today to go forward because sometimes you may have to say, no, I'm not doing it. It won't work. It's going to create problems. But then you can give them an option of a pedestal system. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the other thing I want to touch on, too, with one of the inherent problems is you, maintenance. This may have been minimized, minimized a little bit with 
better maintenance, obviously there was little of it and that, but, but it, in this case, it wouldn't have prevented it. And that, um, let's don't, I think you elaborate on the difficulty in this case, this particular deck, it would have been almost impossible to uh, get the crickets right and get this thing to drain properly in that sub drainage. And that there was this, even though if he get, if the, the contractor got the water to drain off, which he did in the front, we can see on the top left picture, inevitably this system was holding water and, and therefore we see a combination of what it looks like efflorescence and probably some latex leaching there as well. And again, once the waterproof membrane goes on, the, the, the chance of getting that fixed is minimal. They're not moving backwards, they're going to move forwards. And as a tile contractor, you're going to get pushed into doing that. And you've got to be able to push back and say, no, I'm not doing it. It's incorrect. So with all that said and inherent problems, let's let's start to explain what does a pedestal system actually look like. And this is a, a really simple diagram. And we'll get into some of the, the necessities and understandings of a pedestal system. Um, let me pause just for a second. We jumped into the pedestal system about five years ago, um, kind of on a whim when, when a client had, had presented a project to us and we and and obviously we had seen our fair share of being asked to to evaluate decks that have failed actually i'm evaluating one next tuesday um and a pedestal section next tuesday and um and we were looking for a better way of doing exterior decks and that's kind of how we came to the pedestal pedestal uh, projects it's become a very good business for us um it, it's a great product group and, and 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 it falls really really well into what tile and stone setters normally do but m moving on from that explanation a, a pedestal system is made up of basically uh two components a, a flat roof deck or even could be a pitched roof deck we'll get into a minute and it's the pedestals themselves the pavers themselves and martin i know you want to elaborate a little more as well yeah i would anyone who's got the smartphone with them right now and can use it, I would snap a photo of that because even though it's a very simple diagram, there's a lot of important information on that. We'll go to the first one, door threshold. You've got to know your egress. You've got to know your height. If you don't know your height, it's going to fail. You're not going to get it right. Uh, perimeter containment. You've got to be able to hold those pavers in. You don't want them falling off the edge. You've got to be able to hold them there. Really important. Then, of course, the roof drain, and everything below the membrane, protection board, insulation, roof deck, et cetera, is all a consideration. I, for, my first question would be to the to the roofing guy to make sure that his uh, roofing surface is compatible with a pedestal system, whether it can take the PSI for me to be able to put my pedestal system on. What does he need under the pedestal system? How, how does he want me to protect his roof membrane? And they're the, the real important questions you need to ask before you start moving forward but that door threshold really important absolutely and we'll get into that a little more here in a minute and that so let's start what's what starts a, a a pedestal system the porcelain pavers we uh this is a um <clears throat> a, a fairly new product to the to to the industry and really what kind of opens it up for the tile contractor and the stone contractor and that our, our friends at Dow Tile, uh, Del Conca, several people are making two and three centimeter uh, porcelain pavers. This is something you've got to understand though, and, and, and we were talking about this earlier today, Martin, and that is these materials are specifically designed for a pedestal system. There are no standards out there right now for a pedestal system from 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 the pedestals themselves to the tile and so you're really relying on your manufacturer and your distributor to give you the correct information to make sure that everything complies with putting this tile in as a pedestal system really important please ask those questions before you move forward there's a lot of cool sizes coming out. We're seeing, obviously, the standard right now as far as sizing is concerned. It seems to be the 24 by 24. We are doing 24 by 48s, and there's even 8 by 48s being made in both 2 and 3 cm. One thing I'd like to, for somebody just to have a, a, an awareness of is, you, is that that what you'll see the SRR, SRI solar reflective rating for a, for the tile themselves. Um, a tile that is of light, play, light color placed in a sunny 
in a sunny area of the of the U.S., like Florida, Southern Cal, and that will will that that sun will reflect off of it, where the uh, person using that 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 walking on that floor will um, ultimately have to wear their sunglasses. And on the other side of that, you take a, a dark colored porcelain paver and stick it on that same floor in that same sunny area and that they may not be able to walk on it so so you, you got to know the materials and and be aware of this to at least set expectations early on in the installation uh, moving on let's look at the second part and the part that I probably fascinated me and got me most interested in is the pedestals themselves they are um, typically made up of uh, uh, PVC plastic that use a lot of post-consumer waste in their in, in their construction. Um, they are multi-component. Martin will touch on that here in a second. Um, their heights, we look, a pedestal can be as little as an eighth inch and can be a fixed height. That center picture shows like a three-quarter inch pedestal. Um, they obviously can not only be put on decks, but they also can be used on patios or flat patios as well. So they're not just limited to elevated decks. Um, they also, pedals can go up as high as 36 inches, and we're doing one. We have some pictures in of a fairly high deck. Um, they are highly adjustable, and they, they do it from the base. They do it in shims. They do it with uh, different components and uh, they can handle some of them will handle as much as a 7% grade change although uh, you typically will see a, a, a 2 to 3% on most flat roof decks. And I, I'll add to that Woody at the trade shows that I've been going to I'm seeing a lot of people come into the marketplace with pedestal systems. They all look very similar and they all serve the same function. I would say they're not all created equal. So we stay with a reputable manufacturer who we know's product works. It's a little bit more expensive, but we know it works. There are options out there that are less expensive. I'm not willing to take a chance. You've got four four points that are carrying a tile on the, and I want to make sure the strongest part of the system, or two strongest parts, the tile, but the pedestal system too. It's carrying a lot of load on a small area, and it's really important that it's a high quality pedestal system that can take the weight and is not going to degrade over time. Otherwise, you're taking it all out. Absolutely. You and I both have talked about this in a great deal that 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 we have each chosen manufacturers and have built relationships with those manufacturers to uh, with their pedestals because there are a lot of components that can be a part of a, a pedestal system. Rule number one, every one of those components is important. Don't try to cheap out and miss one of those components out. They're all very important components within the pedestal system. And that, yeah, and and they and just like any like the mortar manufacturers make different mortars to address different installations. So do the pedestal manufacturers make different components to address to address installation problems or or things you would see commonly in pedestal applications. If I know this is a a, a small slide, but at the bottom, the very bottom of this slide, um, the, the uh, is a floating base and it would be used on a roof insulated system where they have less than 40 PSI. Uh, most pedestal manufacturers require a minimum of 40 PSI load for a, to do a pedestal application, but there are uh, components that address that. Now they'll add cost to it, um, but but you, you really want to know the uh, pedestal uh, manufacturer and know what they offer. Um, and most of the reputable manufacturers or supply houses will offer an estimating uh, uh, service. So you could give them a drawing. They'll want to see elevations and stuff, more of an architectural uh, isometric view. But they will calculate what you need to make that deck work. And uh, we find that very uh, valuable too. And Absolutely. that's the relationship we have with the pedestal manufacturer. Now, looking at this... It it's not just porcelain pavers that can be put on pedestals. There are also concrete pavers. Um, there are Indiana limestone. That picture in the bottom left is a project where we did and are still doing actually right now that are, that's two and a quarter inch Indiana limestone, uh, wood e pay. And, um, if you'll look kind of in the mid middle of the picture of the uh, bottom left, there's rolls of turf, which is what's being represented in the top, right. Um, uh, this falls, even though it's not uh, EPE wood tiles are 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 
not something that tile contractors in, handle on a day in day out basis. They are uh, a, a product that we install a lot of actually, and 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 it's become a good business for us. So so we just didn't limit to ourselves. So obviously, we're always going to be a porcelain and a, a stone a preferred contractor, but but we don't limit ourselves. Do you want to touch on the fiber grate and the use of it a little bit there, Woody? Yeah, I will. Um, um, if you can kind of see, and we have another picture and another slide here, but uh, in the center, that kind of black mass you see in the bottom left uh, of, of the picture of the slide, um, that is a product called fiber grate. And it, and it allows for some creativity in some cases, um, and but we use it for bridging. We in this case, it was used to support the turf, and it is uh, placed. In that particular, we, we or it comes in various sizes, as much as uh, four or five by twelve sheets. Um, in that particular job, we ordered four by eight uh, because it worked out for the module better. Um, um, it's fairly expensive. Um, but it, it's capable of handling load and it's used, you'll see a lot of it's used in industrial applications, but uh, what's really cool about fiber grade is we could essentially put fiber grade over a pedestal system and then using, create multi patterns. We could throw uh, the tile in an ashlar pattern. Uh, we could throw it into different patterns. So, so the, 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 there's some other detail and I don't want to get into now, but, but, but it allows for some cre creativity and you've got a job right now that you're using it. In a residential project. Yep, we have an architect who likes to push the envelope with his work and his ideas. Uh, of course, they're all on the back of a, a napkin, but uh, he came up with the idea of using fiber grate and uh, calicata gold in his uh, shower stall. He wants to have a floating uh, shower floor in a resident residential application, and we're willing to do that. We use the fiber grate and the stones being set on top. And uh, you know, that's a new one for us. We've never done it before, but you know, that's his idea. He wants to see it uh, to fruition. So we're, we're going ahead and doing it. I'm looking forward to seeing those pictures and that there are some things that are very unique to pedestals applications that you need to have an awareness of. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb and tell you I'm not an engineer of any type. I'm a tile and stone contractor. And I think Martin would agree that we aren't going to be engineers, but there's something unique that you have to be aware of. It's called wind uplift or wind equalization. And this is where an engineer is going to be required when you're in certain parts or on a building. If you're in a 50 story building, the wind equalization has become a factor that you're going to have to be aware of and make sure that it's being addressed by the manufacturer. As Martin said, right, right now there's no standards out there. The only standard that you'll kind of hear quoted, and I just want everybody to be aware of is the Miami Dade uh, standard, but for, for, uh, roof systems but you need to understand that that is a bonded system and it is not a a, a loose slate or free floating like pedestals are so so in some cases engineers are going to be required in that um and there are again no current standards and each manufacturer has addressed uh wind uplift in different ways sometimes they'll use grommets in the inside corners uh, and um of the where the four tiles meet and you will actually attach a grommet that, that, that pinches the tile into, onto the pedestal. They'll use um, uh, 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 lintels on the outside edges that they'll, that'll attach to the parapet wall. But um, we just want you to be aware of it. And here, the bottom left picture is a, is a 40 mil roof that when got a hold of it and lifted it literally right off the deck so you can imagine these tiles generally weigh about six to eight pounds per square foot so you're looking at an individual 24 by 24 that's weighing about 30 30 pounds and i don't want that thing lifting off and and landing on somebody at street level well we all know at certain parts of the country uh, it would have no the wind would have no problem lifting a tile up and and throwing it off the top of a 40 50 story high rise and once one comes up then all the others are following too so like what he said we're not engineers really important questions again to ask uh, limit your liability put it on someone else right there's so many details that play into wind uplift the height of the parapet the 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 uh, tile type the system there's there's a how how the roofs are sloping so there's a lot of things that play into that barn i want you to really kind of jump in on this slide, especially that bottom right. So I think we have a, a guy from the Pacific Northwest, Brian Stevens, who 
who uh, we've been talking. He's got a, a job up there that uh, is uh, the photo is on the bottom right and he's getting the corner snap and the supplier keeps giving in tiles. He keeps swapping them out, keeps putting them back to keep snapping. So if you go to the bottom left, you'll see those point loads on the pedestal system, how it's important to have 100 percent contact on the pedestal systems to make sure that, that that point load is spread out on a small space so you're not getting the cracking on the corner. We don't know exactly what Brian's problem is right now, but I have a good idea. I'm not gonna share that right now, but I have a good idea what's going on. But as you can see in the middle is the brake strength. And, and then if you go to the top right, these are point loads from things that might be out on the patio, like the, the chair or the table or a large barbecue or something, they're all gonna add point loads. Really important that that tile is designed for a pedestal system and that the pedestal system is adequately designed to take that weight of the point loads also. Also, uh, one of the things is bottom left picture with the tray. Um, this goes back to a specific manufacturer and and and, and the, the pedestal manufacturers don't always are working with the porcelain paver manufacturer. So, so whoever the porcelain paver manufacturer is, you've got to understand what their requirements is, are. Some manufacturers want you to five spot put an additional pedestal in the center of it. Um, some of them want you to use trays and they they have various types of trays, which are part of that earlier slide with all the components and that. So it is an assembly, it is a system. You have to have awareness of it. And and then it becomes what, what, what type of pedestal application, a commercial one like it's gonna be used for a bar area and that is gonna, you're going to have a lot more demand than you necessarily are in a residential application. And sometimes by adding that fifth pedestal adds a pivot point. So you it may make you may have to add extra labor uh, there to get to set that pedestal because it's going to be more time. Uh, you've got to fine tune it more if that pivot points in the middle and you're trying to hit all the four corners. So if it does require a fifth pedestal system in the middle, allow some more labor in there so you can install it and you can fine tune it. Types of roofs that these will go over. These are unique to us being tile and stone contractors that we don't normally see. Um, EPDM, flat, uh, PVC, uh, TPOs, pitched, and torch down. All these, again, and the only thing I, we really want you to take away from this slide is A, know that the roof membrane is compatible with the pedestal systems. A lot of times, uh, certain, especially with the PVCs, we have to, they act, the roofing contractor actually leaves us extra pieces of PVC that we cut and place under each pedestal, which adds to labor. The other thing is know that most pedestal applications have to have a minimum of 40 psi it's not that they can't get around it with some components but but the the the, the consensus right now seems to be a minimum of 40 psi now and, and add to that uh woody there there are some large manufacturers out there a closed cell foam insulation that do meet that criteria but they're not all the same for instance i'm not going to mention the manufacturer but they do different compressive strengths of this closed cell. Some of them do meet that 40 PSI, but some don't. You've got to check the number on there to make sure it complies with the pedestal system. This one obviously didn't. And if you look in the uh, in the view of the pedestals there, you can see them starting to collapse. It's starting to compress. Uh, and that was probably because somebody thought the, the foam insulation was all equal and that they didn't have to spend X amount of dollars for the for the other one and they went with the less expensive one and then you have a failure. Now you've got to tear it all out and put the right one in. So understanding the roof slope, it's important because this is going to be unusual. Generally, we're the guys that are taking materials and creating slope. Now that the, the uh, roofing contractor will will create it for us, and and now we we put these slides together to kind of help you understand that if you look in that center picture, this these roof pitches can get extremely complex when you're uh, with the crickets and everything, and we ca catching the roof drains, uh, and this gets the complexity leads to the complexity of, of how the pedestals are fig, fill, are figured out when we're uh, estimating the projects. And a, a and B would be a piece of cake, right? That's a walk in the park. Right. You get to C and you're looking at this and 
maybe you've not done a pedestal system before. I'm telling you right now, there's going to be a lot more materials that you need to buy for C and a lot more man hours you need to be able to put that deck in. So make sure that you at least have some idea of the isometrics of the roof to make sure that you're allowing the time and the extra materials so that you can make money. I promise you, you're not going to get an isometric drawing in that when you uh, go to take it off. What you're going to get is something like this mm -hmm. and that. So this is a deck we did down at CNN here in Atlanta um, the year before last. Um, this is uh, it's the bottom left picture shows the as built. The uh, center is the actual drawing that we were given f through the architectural firm. Um, and when we went to field ver verify it, um, which is how we got the picture on the bottom left, um, we found out basically all the architectural drawings were incorrect in that, and that the egress point, which we'll get into in a minute, uh, did, wasn't what it was. The falls were different and it became um, much more complex than they would have you think. And that what we did is we took this and as we did our takeoffs, ultimately what we end up with in, in learning the takeoff is we end up with something like this. And Martin, you, we, you talked about this a little bit earlier. This is the manufacturer working with us to create a drawing of where the which pedestals go where and and how that deck was actually sloping. We we got this from actually going out there and using a laser level and 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 giving them the height variations of the different uh, pedestals. Now the manufacturer obviously is going to want a commitment from you if it goes into this scale of of complexity and and giving you all the bits and pieces. So I think you talked about this on our conversation previously, Woody, that he was not willing to give you this unless you uh, committed to buying his system. But it's a it's invaluable. I mean, you can't you you couldn't do the job without this. No, absolutely. You, you, and this is where uh, forming those relationships with your vendors and and and. and working with them and they know that we're solid they were willing to to provide us with 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 a much more basic version of this drawing set to, and then as we were going back and forth on on the with the pedestals and that but th but that you aren't going to get this until you make a purchase and that here's this is a, a this is a much more this is a project we just completed this is a much more um basic one and that that the deck was only p pitching in one direction uh and this is just our hand drawing of of uh of how we uh got the layout for the pedestals and that that's a great drawing to give the guys in the field so they go out there and they have a roadmap they know exactly which pedestal goes where and they follow it and everyone's happy Right, you may be able to get away with the, that when we were showing roof slopes. You may be able to get with a very basic, uh, uh, if it's only pitching in one direction and without anything. But it, once you get into any complexity, you're going to have to spend the time. And this is where you're going to either make your money or lose your money in the takeoff and, and estimating process. You've got to spend the time to to develop these kind of drawings uh, to uh, even get yourself into the pedestal. Do you want to just uh, roughly uh, just touch on the egress there at the bottom left please would you yeah absolutely martin um, when we were uh, the first thing we need to know is 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 what the egress point where's our starting height for every pedestal job your your start is going to be where you're entering into the to the pedestal deck um in that so you need to know that height this is a picture my guys took it because we were already on the job doing tile work they added the decks at the last minute um they sent me this picture so i could get that first uh, egress point which would allow me to to uh, set the, the height. Each pedestal manufacturer has different series of pedestals that range from certain heights and that, and then they get into couplers and that as they build higher and higher. Um, and, um, uh, and, and, but the, the first thing you need to know is the egress point and that, so installation process, as uh, we've said, a lot of components. Um, um, this is a deck we were building and you can see, uh, we basically on this deck used every single component. And that might be just, you might have a couple of guys just assembling parts for a couple of three days right there, just to make sure that you're efficient with your time when you do get up on the roof and that, you know, you start installing the pedestal system. But these parts, maybe uh, that one there, Woody, that maybe there's three or four different components there that you had to put together and assemble. 
Absolutely. And we had to allow for that in our estimate because in, on this particular deck, we probably had a good two weeks just assembling uh, pedestals. Martin, you, I want you to talk that the, the top right picture there is a job that Martin completed recently. Why don't you speak on that? Well, that's, uh, you know, typically I think looking at everybody else's online and social media and stuff, how they're doing it, we're all doing it the same. It's like, it's just, it's a natural process how to do it. You, you start, you find set points, uh, you do it like a tile layout, you do a string line or you do a laser and then you work, you work from that. We started on that front edge, we squared it from the building, all nice and square. And then uh, we have a helper just dropping the pedestals on top and then the installer getting down on his knees and then stalling and fine tuning those pedestals and dropping the tile on. Uh, this is one where we had edge containment. So we have perimeter containment there. We had them um, put a L uh, bar on that railing and weld it on. And so my last tile is actually sitting on that L bar. And so it won't fall off the edge. And then it was flashed with the copper flashing over the top and back into the gutter. And, uh, but, I think, the only thing I, yeah, I think the only thing I would add to this is understand you're doing two types of layout. You're laying out the pattern, but you're also dealing with elevation. So popping lines on a deck sometimes just isn't going to work. You're going to have to pull the string lines, and, and, and uh, uh, especially as the roofs become more complex. Here is uh, during the installation process, we choked on this. And I'm going to jump through this slide. Uh, again, you need a road map. That. So we start uh retainment martin we touched on this it's absolutely paramount and you'll figure find like some martin said they on their particular ones they had a bar welded between between the rails to retain it and the one on the right that we did this is actually uh had a small parapet um already in place and you can see again the retainment and it's this is absolutely necessary in the pedestal system and as we get into you get into higher or more complex ones uh, with the parapets uh, the the pedestal manufacturers and the paper manufacturers want to see some uh, gap between the retainment and the tile but but it's absolutely necessary Martin, we, you and I have had a good time. This is this is one of the things I find real cool about pedestals is uh, uh, the um, the ability for mechanicals to run through it um, and the the bridging process using the fiber grate. We 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 have not had an opportunity to do one as complex as this. This is I looked at this and it's like Woody, you're a brave man. It's very complicated. You can see he's doing a lot of bridging. Uh, there's a lot of components and you know it's a lot of thought has to go into this to make this work. You know, and you, uh, what, what you have to really watch out when you're looking at pricing these these jobs is you you can't just say, okay, here's a deck, here's pedestals. You generally uh, MEPs are an afterthought a lot of times, and you you a lot of coordination with other trades during the process of installing it. Um, while you'll know drain heights and and you can work, you'll 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 inevitably going to have to bridge them a lot of times. Um, you really need to uh, get clarification of who else is going to be running through this. It's a great advantage of pedestals, but you better have a, an acute awareness of what is how much more time it's going to uh, and disruption is going to cost to the installation. And and some of these manufacturers, right, Woody, require bracing, so you, you you're not going to be able to go up 36 inches without bracing these components together. Right. I'll, I'll I'll elaborate a little bit. This particular deck is. Um, was uh, the pedestal height is 24 inches. The uh, limestone we're placing on it is two and a quarter inch, two foot by four foot Indiana limestone. And uh, the homeowner who, who owns this happens to be an engineer, um, which was a good thing. Uh, and uh, uh, he want, he had walked on a deck when we were first uh, presenting this to him. He had, had seen a bad pedestal project and he, it wobbled. So we actually even did a mock-up, which we're used to doing, um, and, and did a 100-foot mock-up. And part of that mock-up is we, we decided working with the pedestal manufacturer to do the cross bracing early on. You see the cross bracing kind of in that top left. Interesting, though, uh, as we got into it, you know, my inclination would have said, hey, I want to put this in the top third of the uh, of the of, of the pedestal but the manufacturer actually wants it at, at, at in at least at the halfway point or below and and that, that was uh, 
uh, again, not being an engineer and working with the uh, pedestal manufacturer's engineer was something we learned. Um, so life cycle, Martin, you want to talk about life cycle? Yeah, I mean the life cycle. The life cycle really is not going to be in the tile, but it's going to be in the membrane underneath. So, you know, you could replace that membrane underneath two or three times, still use the same tile and pedestal system. That's the one advantage I'm seeing out there is what people like is because membranes have a tendency to fail on a much quicker uh, cycle than what the life cycle is. So they fail earlier than what people think that they're going to get from it but they're now looking at these pedestal systems as an alternate where they can save and reuse the the tile and pedestal systems but just replace the membrane underneath so it really is um, a huge consideration I'm seeing with architects and stuff of, of specking out these decks of using it as a life cycle uh, pitch point to say that it really is a, a, a better system to use uh, on a on a deck and, and more usable and we can get on the maintenance too is uh, we've been back to a few jobs we've done and we've had to fine-tune them there are uh, instances where the building will move and and the tiles rocking a little bit and we'll go in there and we'll fine-tune it so that's why I say low maintenance rather than zero maintenance there is some uh, maintenance aspects to it but it's fixable it's some you're not chopping tile out you're just pulling a tile with some suction cups adjust that pedestal system drop the tile back in job done yeah, the, the dovetailing on that, you know, if if you've been doing an exterior decks for any length of time, inevitably you have come across where the where the waterproofer missed a detail and the deck leaks, or uh, a number or or a detail was missed, or a flashing wasn't properly placed, or a lot of different things, you know. And when you have a hard set deck, uh, it becomes a chore. You're going to have to dig things out. Be careful not to damage the membrane further. With pedestal systems, it's easily just pick up a few tiles, let them do their the, figure out where things are leaking, put it all back together, and it's it, it becomes uh, very uh, easy to kind of deal with those situations that that are going to happen. They're inevitably, they're going to happen. I, I love the fact that with this is a uh, that this both the wood and and the pavers are done in this particular picture on pedestals, so you can create steps. Uh, um, you see the lighting running into the steps. Uh, the creativity is is really limitless and uh, and uh, I, I think it, it, there's an opportunity that I think the tile industry has not tapped into yet to uh, to offer a, a, an exterior paving process that is is you know fairly bulletproof and with that we'll turn it over and see if anybody has any questions for us thanks so much Woody and Martin yes uh, You've ignited a storm of questions. It's a hot, pedestals are a hot topic. Who knew? Um, we're definitely not going to be able to get to all of them, but we are going to share this with Woody and Martin afterwards so that they can address them individually. Um, but I, I do have a few to touch on now. Um, the first one is, would it be advisable to partner with a roofing company for waterproofing or learn how to waterproof these installations ourselves? I'll fill uh, that one. You won't be, I'll, I'll fill it and I'll let you fill it. I, I would tell you that, um, Yes, is the answer to that question. I, I get a lot of my pedestal work in, as a tiered sub working with roofing or waterproofing contractors, and I've developed several relationships, and they are actually looking for guys and gals like us that will partner with them because they don't understand layouts and and they I, I think a funny story is they'll that you'll have to get used to is they want to they want to speak in squares and we speak in square feet so you you'll have to get through some vocabulary with them but but uh, definitely a yes one of the other things too I mean I'm in California I'm a licensed state I can't as a tile uh, contractor do roofing work so you want to check with your local authority or your state make sure that you're covered to do that kind of work or get licensed accordingly if you want to start roofing I don't I stay away from it I team up I have again some partners uh, who are very um, uh, well versed in waterproofing and waterproofing systems and I trust their knowledge and expertise and we go over what they give us. 
Absolutely. Yeah. I, you, oh, I'll, I'll back up. Yes. You want to partner with somebody. No, you don't want to be doing waterproofing unless you, unless you want to get into that business and, and that learning curve and that you don't want to get into exterior uh, roof deck waterproofing, extremely complex, different world uh, than what we work in. Great. We got this question a couple of times. What is a cricket? A cricket is an area that um, probably the easiest way to see it, if you're looking at your roof and you have a chimney coming into a gable or a hip, so as the roof is sloping into the fireplace, directly behind the fireplace, a, a roof system will be built that is uh, that, that would create a, a, a gable that's opposite of that that flares the water into a different direction martin you may have a better I, i'll try to paint that word picture i may have missed that one um i'd say it's a it's a change in elevation and direction so it, it's it's defying the laws of gravity it's going different direction different elevation to create that slope in a roof and, and you'll see it around the drains uh, if you go up on a on a roof deck you'll see uh typically around the roof drains and it's just to get that elevation to make it flow to make everything flow to the drain and it can be really severe at times it can be you know like one to two inches per foot to get to that roof drain and then with a typical bonded system we're expected to tile that and it's almost impossible to do uh, successfully and uh, so you could look it up too I would just google crickets it's going to give you roof crickets it's going to give you an answer right there Right. Great. How do we know when to recommend this over outdoor tile and stone? I I, I say I, I'm I am so uh, positive on pedestal systems. It, it, um, I'm going to almost always try to um, have a, a customer to consider a pedestal system. However, there are uh, where you typically have to go back to F TCNA F103 or, or a mud bed or hard bonded system will have more to do with with uh, uh, height restrictions or elevation limitations in that and and then obviously there's some cost involved in what it's going to take to set up different like the retaining points that there's going to be some cost involved in kind of re-engineering or rethinking the uh, deck in, in a particular way. I, I'll just add to that. Um... We're doing it because we're doing more pedestal systems in high-end residential right now than bonded systems. So almost every deck that we do right now in a high-end residential uh, marketplace is a pedestal system. And I think the ability, to, you know, to um, Martin, I think the ability to level a deck is is one of the things that's a, a good selling point. Although you have surface tension and you have to set expectations, and uh, instead of having to put that two percent. Uh, grade that we have to if we're doing a, a hard bonded system uh, to make water flow all of a sudden now we can level that deck and let the water flow between the tiles and, and get picked up by the membrane below and it is a growing marketplace i would say anyone who's interested right now research it get involved because it is a growing marketplace great before i move to the next question would do you want to put on the contact slide uh so that people have specific questions they can contact you there we sure. go perfect Beautiful. Um, there you are. There you are, everyone. Um, next question. At what stage of the design process do we need to know what kind of bonding we should and can use? Well, bonding? Um, I'm not sure if I understand that question. Yeah. Hopefully the person who asked it could uh, specify a little bit more, but we will move on to the next okay. one. Well, well, we're not actually bonding anything, so we're a floating system. So uh, we're, I mean, again, you want to get with the architect, the roofing, and the framers to make sure that you know everything's compatible with the minimum 40 psi. You want to make sure that the roofing membrane is adequately uh, able to support the pedestal system with the point loads. Uh, so you really, at design stage, you really want to make sure because there are no standards out there with the pedestal system or the tile designed for the pedestal system. You want to make sure you're with the manufacturers to make sure that all the system is compatible, that everything from frame into waterproof into pedestals to tile is all going to work with each other. Okay, great. Any concerns with wind uplift? Oh yes. boy, yes, <laughs> yes. It's it's a tremendous. You know, that's I think why Martin and I both have said, hey, we've kind of uh, uh, 
it's not that I'm never not open to new uh, new new people, but I, I've kind of settled in with a particular pedestal manufacturer, and and they've done a lot. They've individually done a lot of testing, um, but right now is I, I don't think we I think Martin we both couldn't iterate enough. This is the wild west out here, and you've got to educate yourself. And there's a reason why we wanted to put this program over. I mean, we've I've spent a lot, you know, the last couple of years really speaking to a lot of people. Um, there's a lot of people coming into the market with different different uh, assemblies and different pedestals, um, and, and and some are really good, some maybe not so good, and and you've really and, and because you're sitting out there with the with the, those two L words we love in America, which is liability and lawyers, you better know what you're getting yourself into. And as Woody pointed out earlier in the slideshow, we're not engineers, and we shouldn't even try to be engineers. That all the calculations need to be done by an engineer to prove that it can be done successfully. Good, good, good for everybody to know. Um, next question, are there any advantages or disadvantages related to the different, different pedestal height? No, not not particularly. The, I don't think heights would give it, a, a, you know, it, it, it's the, the heights are simply um, um, addressing the uh, what heights you're working with and, and what slopes you're having to deal with so so there's not necessarily a it, it, it's really just what the design of and what your what the roof deck looks like and which what heights you're having to work with to to create that that pedestal flat roof system Pro providing all the components you need are used i mean the, the the one thing about going up higher and woody touched on that earlier we've not done one that high but uh, that that manufacturer required bracing uh, at a at, at half or below, and so that's something that needs to be taken into consideration. The, oh, the, there, the yeah, there are some. I'm sorry, back. Martin. I'm sorry about that. Ahead, no, there please. are some there are some weight limitations, right? There's going to be some weight limitations on the, the each pedestal manufacturer has specific weight limitations at some point. Yep. That's why uh, I think the relationship between yourself and the pedestal uh, supplier or manufacturer is really important. Uh, another interesting question. Are you finding you compete against landscape and competition? The labor difference is where I see separation in my market. I can honestly say I have not competed against one landscape company yet. I mean, I'm not. that's not to say I'm not going to, but as of now, not one landscaping company has, has uh, been bidding the work with a pedestal system. It's all been tile contractors. I and have, tile yeah, contractors. I have competed. I have competed with it, and it's been fairly easy. Uh, I will tell you, we're more expensive. But when you start talking about silica and safety protocols and knowing what we know and 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 uh, having under having educated ourselves in the pedestals and themselves, um, it, it's it's fairly easy to find that customer that wants us on the project and those are the projects we want to be on. All right, couple more. Uh, how is the pedestal adhered to the deck without puncturing the waterproofing? It's not, it's free floating. It's, not, it's free floating and that's why in the, when we were looking at that earlier slide when we were looking at the different type of roof membranes, um, uh, essentially some of the the EPTMs basically the PVCs especially um, won't uh, want us to take a piece of their membrane and simply place it a, a loose laid piece underneath the pezzle they're doing that for friction purposes over time um, but um, there's uh, uh, that they aren't adhered at all there are now there are some systems out there on the commercial side when you get into some very uh, commercial applications where they may want some things done but it's that's not what we're really speaking to those get into specific situations and specific manufacturers and a specific process for a specific project okay wonderful all right we'll do last question and then we will close it out um do you recommend certain pedestal manufacturers over others oh i'm 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 not going to get propriety on here i think the thing is do your market research uh, you'll find pretty quickly who the reputable ones are, who the ones who offer service, and uh, who uh, have a great product. Uh, I don't think it would be fair to uh, start throwing manufacturers' names out. Uh, please email me privately if you want my experience with the one I use. Uh, just email me, Martin, at heritagemarbletile.com, 
and I'd be more than willing to open that discussion privately, but not not on here. Yeah, I would agree. I, I, I'm just going to ditto what you said there. I'm not going to get prior. I, I certainly have a preferred vendor um, for the, all the reasons Martin me mentioned. But uh, but again, there's a lot of good people out there. You're going to have to do your research. Okay, wonderful. Thank you again, everyone, for participating, for submitting those great questions. We will be sharing the question log with Woody and Martin uh, so they can get back to you individually. Obviously, their emails are up on the screen. Please feel free to email them with any questions that you have. Uh, and thank you to Woody and Martin for a wonderful presentation and for sharing with us today. Thank you to everyone who's attended Coverings Connected so far this week uh, and also this session. Uh, once you leave today's webinar, you will receive a survey on the presentation. It's short, we promise, and we would appreciate it if you could complete it and provide your feedback. Coverings 2021 will take place in April 13th through 16th in Orlando, Florida. Uh, look for more information on this in the coming months. And on behalf of Coverings Connected and our wonderful presenters, thank you so much for joining us today. Please stay safe and healthy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.